Praise the Lord, everyone. I do not own the rights to the music. I do not own the rights to the music. I do not own the rights to the music. How you doing? This is the Lord's name is to be praised. My name is Sister Vanessa McClendon. We're going to have, we're getting ready to get into the scripture. Let's break the word apart. We're going to, uh, uh, now we're going to get into it. Into, verse by verse. And discuss it. We're going to go into, um, 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 Mark chapter 10 down at the 13th verse on down we're going to, on down to uh, the 20 I think it's the 25th verse yes thank the Lord thank the Lord so um, praise God so get get your Bibles up let's get ready to get into the word and uh, Sunday I'll be teaching my Sunday school uh, uh, Sunday school uh, Bible class and I'll be on, on YouTube, and it's at 10 o'clock. I want you to join me, and we're going to continue to be talking about the book of, uh, uh, we'll be in the book of Mark, uh, some uh, further scriptures a little uh, further down. Praise the Lord. And also, to, uh, at, uh, I'm on at 10 o'clock, and my pastor's on at 12. The superintendent out of Reginald Bradley is my pastor, and he's on at 12 o'clock, so tune in. Uh, uh, to the service to be blessed and on Tuesday we have prayer and Bible band taught by Mother Costa and uh, while the First Lady is re recovering and long she's a teaching along with the, the pastor okay well praise God thank God for you I appreciate you joining me we're going to get into the, the scriptures and we, we're going to pray first Father we just thank you for your goodness and mercy all that you've done all that you're going to do Lord God Oh God, look on the look on the people. Oh, look on the people that are listening. All the listeners, Lord God, have your way. Open up our understanding. Give, tell me, show me how to teach this lesson, Lord God. Give me what to say and what not to say. God, have your way, Lord God. Bless each and every one. People that are going through difficult situations or uh, with the sickness in the air, Lord, you're the one that healeth thee. God, we just thank you for all things. Your goodness and mercy, in Jesus' name, Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, we're going to go to, um, yeah, we're going to Mark, Mark chapter 10, starting at verse 13. This is when Jesus is going to bless the little children. And, uh, and, and also it's in, uh, it's in uh, Matthew chapter 19, and, uh, and it's in, again, it's in Luke chapter 18, but we're talking about Mark chapter 10. And they brought the young children to him that he should touch them. He's going to lay his hand on them and pray for the children. And his disciples rebuked those, the parents, who, uh, who had brought those children uh, to Jesus. Praise God. So, and so uh, you, when you be, rebuke someone, you criticize, you, 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 uh, well, you criticize, you disapproval, a strong, sharp disapproval. But God was, Jesus wasn't pleased with that. He wanted to, you let your little children, don't, don't uh, suffer them to not come to him. Praise the Lord. Don't stop them from coming. Praise the Lord. Verse 10 and 14, he was, uh, and when Jesus saw it, he saw that his disciples were stopping uh, to let the parents know not to bring the children, to try to stop those children from coming to Jesus. Uh, he what Jesus was displeased and said unto them, Suffer. He don't want you to stop them, the children to come unto me. For forbid them not. For, for uh, such is the kingdom of God. Praise God. God wasn't pleased with that. <coughs> not bringing their children. I mean, he, want the, he didn't want to stop the people, parents, or whoever they had their children to keep them from coming. But the disciples were not, they didn't want, they were rebuking the people that were bringing their children, parents. Jesus, he, he wasn't pleased with that. So, verse 15 of Mark, Verily, verily, verily I say unto you, as truly, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as that little child, he shall not enter therein. So, you come to Jesus, you got to be as a little child, childlike faith. People should, you know, trust the Lord with childlike faith, taking God at His word. Childlike faith is an innocent, humble faith that believes and trusts the Lord. Because we can, we know with little ones that our own little children or grandchildren, how they they're trusting. They're not worried about the bills, aren't they? They 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 they're trusting and uh, faith in their their parents but the Lord wants the people to come in and give a life to the Lord but to trust him and, and, and have faith as, as a little child 
praise the Lord. 18 and 4. Mark, this is Matthew 18 and 4. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as a little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. You know, the Bible said the kingdom of heaven is not meat and drink, but is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. It's the kingdom of God. Uh, Mark 10 and 16 says, and he took uh, he took them up in his arms. He took the little in his arms and put his he prayed for him, put his and he blessed them. You know, it's very important that we, as parents and grandparents and as, as Sunday school uh, people, are, are, are just witnessing to the world to, uh, to introduce our children as their babies. You know, train up a child where it should go when it's old and not depart from it. We want to get that down in there. We want to we want to train them up and get that down in their heart. It's it's uh, very important that we introduce our children, grandchildren, and everyone to Christ. Praise the Lord. Five and that's that's what you get. That's best. That's the best gift you can have. It giving someone the message of the gospel about Jesus. Praise God. You know more than anything, it's Jesus. Uh, five and sixteen. Let your how the Bible. We have to live what we talk about, which is right. Uh, Bible say, be doers of the, of the word, not hearers only. You deceive your own selves. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, the work, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. They can see the work that the Lord put in your heart to do, working for the Lord. Let, let your light, praise God, holy, living a clean life, praise the Lord through God, praise God, praise the Lord. When Jesus come in, He's able to live that. Uh, we're able to live the sanctified life through Him. Praise God. We can't do it by ourselves, because we were trying to do it by ourselves and couldn't do it by ourselves. We take to Jesus. It takes to be uh, to be born again to be saved. For Second Corinthians three and twelve two said, "Ye are our epistles, written in our hearts, known and read of all men." People, are, some people may not be going to church, but they're looking at your life and see how. Seeing your life, are you living as a Christian? It, it written, uh, we're living on epistles. These are letters in in our hearts. Praise God! People are reading your life. Now, uh, Second Corinthians nine and fourteen. First Corinthians nine and fourteen said, "Even so, has the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live the gospel." So, uh, this is the uh, people that are preaching the word. Live what you uh, preach about. Praise God. The gospel of death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Matthew 21 and 14 says, And the blind man and the lame and the lame came to him in the temple, and Jesus healed them. This is another circumstance instance. Uh, 21 and 15. And when the chief priest and the scribes saw the wonderful thing that he did, he healed the lame. Couldn't walk. And and then he healed the blind. Praise God. And so the, the chief and the chief priests priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that Jesus did and the children were crying in the temple saying the children were saying Hosanna to the son of David they were so displeased so this the priest and the, and the chief priests and the scribes the, uh, the kids the children seen the healing that was going on and they were crying Hosanna which Hosanna mean I believe it's uh, uh, help us or, I can't think of I think it mean help us no I got to I can't think about offhand. Praise God, Hallelujah! Hosanna to the Son of David! They are so dis they were so displeased, so they were mad. Priests and scribes, they didn't. I mean, they didn't like that. And this was what, and said unto him, Hear thou what these say. And Jesus said to them, So the, the scribes and Pharisees were saying, Do you hear what those children are saying? Do you hear what they're saying? And, they're, they're, and Jesus told those. The, the uh, scribes and the, and the chief priests, yea, I, yea, have you never read out of the mouth of babes and suckling thou hast perfected praise? Hey, y'all has perfected praise. Praise God. This is what Jesus told the scribes and the, the chief priests. Praise the Lord. So out of the out of the mouth of babes and suckling, sucklings, thou hast perfected praise. Sometimes a little kid will come, a child will come by, a baby like, and say something about the Lord that would, um, is marvelous to our eyes. It surprises you, encourages your heart. Uh, uh, the rich, we're going to talk about the rich ruler and uh, the young, the rich young ruler. 
and it's in Matthew 19, Luke 18, and uh, Mark 10. And when he had gone forth into the way, there came one running. This is that. This is the young, rich, the rich young ruler. There came one running and kneeled to him, kneeled to Jesus. He was running to Jesus, and asked him, "Good master, what shall I do?" He's asking a question. What shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? This is what that rich young ruler, praise God. And uh, this young man, this young ruler is calling Jesus good, good master. He is good. And we know there's none good but the Father. And Jesus is is God, praise God, the Son of God. And in different, in one of the books, it describes him as a, as a it says certain ruler. And another one called him a young man. But this is all the same person, good master. And uh, Jesus said to him, why callest thou me good? Thou, there is none good but one, that is God. God is good. God is good. Praise the Lord. Why you call me good? But we're going to read on down a little further. And Jesus, God is good. Praise the Lord. Because you know, there is none. Uh, all have sinned and come short, short of the glory of God. There is none, there's none righteous. There is none, uh, none right. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Even, praise the Lord. We'll, we'll cover it. Praise God. There's none good. None but the Lord. Uh, Mark 10 and 19. Thou knoweth the commandments. This is what Jesus was talking to the young man. He was wondering how can he. He ran to him and he was on his knees. Good master, what should I do to receive eternal life? Jesus is saying, don't you, you see, you know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Thou do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. I mean, uh, to lie on someone, defraud not, try to take advantage of somebody, uh, uh, whether it could be financially or, or, or otherwise, honor your mother and father. And um, he, he said, you know the law, but he, this man, this young man, gonna say he he had uh, been he's been observing it all the way from his youth. But you know that good ain't good enough, and all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. I'll tell you that one thing about the law. It, it makes us see ourselves. We all have to stand. It makes us all stand guilty before God. Praise God. It reveals what we, how we look to the Lord, and that we. It directs us that we need a Savior. Matthew, I mean, Psalm nineteen seven. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Praise the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Praise God. So the man thought that. He thought he was good enough. He was self-righteous. He wanted he wanted the kingdom of God on his own terms, and it's not you know it's it's not his op it's not his opinion of eternal destiny, but it's what Jesus what the Lord says His word says for our uh, for your eternal destiny. Uh, praise the Lord. So Jesus is going to use the he he did use the the law to so to try to reveal to this man that about his self-righteousness that he thought he was okay the, the law shows how sinful we are praise the lord romans 3 and 20 therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified to be, be to be uh, made right to be uh, it's like you had never sinned christ uh, justified in his sight because you can't no one can do the law and this is uh, at all but you, you say therefore by the because the, the law is spiritual, um, uh, carnal flesh sold unto sin, born in sin, shape and iniquity. Therefore, by the sins, of, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For the law is the knowledge of sin, because of the law, it exposes. Praise God, and uh, and then also sin against the Lord, because we uh when it's written that we shouldn't have done this and that you've done you just have sinned against god the transgressions his law galatians 3 and 24 said therefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us into christ direct you to christ we're, that we might be justified by faith praise god by faith in jesus he praised the lord justified to be made right we're justified as though we had never sinned because of the blood of jesus uh, Romans 7 and 18 say, For we know in me, that is my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. Praise God, not. 
Okay. Justification by faith. Uh, Romans 3 and 21 says, But now the righteousness of God without for now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophet. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith, because we take it, he take Jesus took our sins and we took his righteousness. And when the Father looked at us, he sees Jesus. He looked pat. He sees Jesus. Praise the Lord. For the righteousness of God without the law is manifested. But witnessed by the law and the prophets. I think I've, I've read that already. Okay. Romans 3 and 22 says, Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, is unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference. So, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned and come to the glory of God. This young man is going to say that he never... That he observed all this. We're going to read what he said. But uh, there's none righteous. No, not one. Praise God. And he uh, and he answered and said to the to him. He's talking to the Lord, Jesus. Jesus let, let him know about the, the tent, the law. And he said, let us know that he did all what he did, all these other things. But you can do sin. You commit adult, You can commit adultery by thinking on a man, a person thinking on another person. And commit that in your heart. You can, you can, uh, you can bear false witness against someone. Praise the Lord. And you can uh, all these other things that we're saying that you can do uh, in your heart. The sin comes out the heart, but we, we, uh, and it works on the outside. Uh, but he answered and said unto him, Master, this is what he told Jesus. And Jesus knows everything. He knows every knows our thoughts before we think of. Master, all these. Things I observed from my youth. And I know he didn't think he never messed up. Everyone has sinned and come short of the glory of God. But since when Jesus come in our heart, we don't live like we used to live anymore. We're brand new creatures. Jeremiah 17 and 9 say, For the heart is desperately wicked above all things. It, uh, uh, who can know it? You know, Jesus, the Lord knows the heart. And he tries the reins of our heart. But the heart is desperately wicked. If you don't need Jesus. Uh, 3 and 19 what then? Are we better than they? No. No, uh, in no wise. For we have before proved that Jew and Gentile, that they all understand. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. Praise God. There is not one. And his man, this lawyer, is included. This young, rich ruler is included. Praise the Lord. Then Jesus behold, he behold the man. He loved him. He loved us too. And you know, there's some, there's things in life that, well, that the te how God, um, the Bible says, the day you hear my voice, heart not your heart is in the provocation. You are gonna provoke God to anger when you when He gives you an invitation to come to Him. You know, you um, the Bible says, no, I've chosen you. You're not chosen me. I've chosen you. Thank the Lord. So. So this, uh, he loved him. He loved us too. He loved the uh, whole world, and said to him, "One thing thou lackest. You lack one thing. Go thy way. Sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross and follow me." You know, there's a cross that everyone has to. When Jesus come in your, comes in our heart, there's a cross we have to take. There's suffering. If you live godly, you're gonna suffer persecution and uh, he told this this rich man to sell all he has and you know God doesn't require that of everyone and God is the one that every good and perfect gift come from above he gives he gives gifts to some people are rich and that uh, and some people aren't but that's all right that's okay you'll be rich spiritually you know put your treasure in heaven where well, moss and rust uh, you know can't can't you know, nobody can take away take that from you the enemy can't take it from you your spiritual man is born again. And this is what I was reading about that verse about, uh, about he told the man to, uh, uh, one thing you lack, you know, the, the first commandment. Praise God, love God. Uh, let me read it. I'll read the first commandment to you when I get down. Okay. Uh, Je uh, James says, 1 and 27 says, Pure religion and undefiled before God and his Father is to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction. And to keep thyself unspotted from the world. You know, we got to be a light. Uh, the Bible says, Let your light so shine me for men, they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Uh, 
and uh, there are you know we can read in the Bible a lot there are a lot of rich people in the Bible there uh, we know Abraham Isaac Job and Solomon there are many others uh, God used these people mightily Matthew 6 and 24 no man can serve two masters you know when you put anything before the Lord that's a God idolatry so no man can serve two masters either he will hate the one or love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other you cannot serve God and man the, the, uh, one thing about uh, uh, people that are trusting this uh, this man that we're talking about was trusting in his riches he was trusting in his riches and uh, these things we're going to leave like that rich man that would say go build more bonds and tear to make new uh, he had uh, grain if I'm not mistaken he was going to tear the, bomb down, the barns down and build new barns and the, the Bible say loud fool this night you know you, you know, you. know, that's the night that the man died so uh, we had to build up on our, our, our spiritual uh, be born again you need to be saved praise God and Timothy 6 and 10 for the love of money people do anything for it they get a life for it for the love of money is the root of all evil it's a root a root like a plant but it's not a plant but uh, which while some covet you know wishing that they had somebody else's stuff and we're not supposed to co cover anybody else we ought stuff we ought to be content with things such as we that we have from the Lord they that they have air from the faith in the, they're in the someone were in the faith and they air from the faith because of money and pierce themselves with many sorrows because of the love of money is the root of all evil you know putting it uh, I just idolatry putting any everything above the Lord and there's nothing wrong with money because we need uh, money bills and things like that but we got to put the Lord first love him put him first and uh, when I was talking about that earlier when Jesus told the man to sell all he had I mean, no, he said, uh, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor. 20 and 3, the first the commandment, thou shall have no other gods before me. We can love him first, above everything. 2 and 4, thou shall, because this is how we learn how to love each other, with, with the, our God be loved with his love, praise God. And 20 and 4, and if we love, we, if we have God's love, we're not going to go out there and commit adultery. We're not going to go out there and do a uh, fornication or steal a covenant. We'll be content with such things that we have. For thou shalt make unto uh, uh, 20 and 4 of Exodus say, Thou shalt not make any, unto thee any graven image, any likeness of anything which is in heaven above, and that which is in the earth beneath, and that is in the water under the earth. So speaking about no other God before God, no idolatry, worship, no matter worshiping things, uh, that are that are on the earth, uh, under the earth, worshiping things. We uh, praise the Lord. We worship the Lord, I, and uh, praise the Lord. You know that there just this circumstances that man, the Lord wanted him to sell what he had and give to the poor, but it's not always that's the case with everyone. Praise the Lord, because we know there were many many people that were uh, rich, and God used mightily. They loved the Lord. They put him first. 10 and 22 and he was sad the man was sad about what Jesus told him he went away grieved he was sorrowful for he had great possession loaded uh, you don't want to lose and when you you can't lose when with with Jesus you can't lose with the Lord you can't lose anything when you come into the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ praise the Lord praise God you know, when we get in, when the Lord comes in our heart, uh, you need to count the cost because it's going to cost. You know, you live God, you don't suffer persecution. Uh, Romans six and twelve said, "Therefore, let us let not let not sin reign in your mortal body, so that you may obey the the uh, obey it evil desire. Let Christ take control of your life. Submit to the Spirit of the Lord. Praise the Lord." You know, because you new creatures, born again, praise God. But he went away grieved. I, he he did what he want. He did it his way. He asked one eternal life. God gave him an answer. Jesus gave him an answer. He walked away sorrowful and grieved. He didn't like the answer. It wasn't the answer that he wanted. But it's a way that seemed right into the man. The man, but the end there was the way of death. Praise God. You can't take any of that stuff with you. 
of Romans 3 and 21. And now the righteousness of God uh, without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law. Okay. Um, praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. So uh, Jesus warned that his disciples of the dangers of wealth. Heavy money is not a sin, but the love of money is the root of all evil. We see a lot of things where people have given their life uh, for dangerous situations, drugs and all kind of things because of money. Do anything for money. But you know, Bible say if the Bible let us know, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. All you need is Jesus. He'll make a way. He's a way maker. He owned the cattle of a thousand hills. And he know he knows what we need. Praise the Lord. And ten and twenty three of Mark, it says that Jesus looked around about and said to his disciples, He's talking to his disciples when that man walked away that uh and we didn't do what the Lord told him to do. And he said, How hardly shall they that are rich enter to the kingdom of God? So it's difficult because the person is trusting in his riches. In, in, but it's not saying it's not it's, it's not possible. Rich people can give up to the Lord too. But let me tell you what they're supposed to. There's some things down here that they could do. I'm going to read a little further. Uh, that the Lord is letting them know in here. But, uh, uh, covenants. I say, uh, praise God. And he said to them, Oh, praise the Lord. Okay, it says, uh, like I want the verse I just read, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? Very difficult. Praise God. They got to trust in, in the stuff. Uh, Luke 12 and 15 says, And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covenants. Covenants mean I want your, I want what you have on. I want your stuff, your money, I'm, you know. All these other things. That's God. Don't, that's not love. That's not God's love. For a man's life doesn't cons, uh, consist not of the abundance of things that he possesses. So you're more than stuff. And it's a beautiful thing to have some things to enjoy. God give us these things to enjoy while we're alive. He that uh, loveth silver shall not be satisfied. No matter how much money you get or silver, that he is not going to be satisfied. You want to next, like sometimes people get a whole lot of money, be about a million. But it's not enough. I want to. I want to hit the next million, or you might have a couple of dollars. You're not satisfied. You want more. Nor he that loveth abundance will increase. This is also vanity. So, Ecclesiastic. This is written by Solomon, a man, a rich, one of the rich kings. David's son. Say, he that loveth silver, shall not be satisfied with silver. Or want more. As cover, uh, covering other things, and. Uh, uh, 10 and 24 disciples was astonished at it was at, when they heard jesus words when he talked to that that um, that young man and he what he just said about um 20 44 what he oh, praise god they were astonished at him and jesus answered again and said unto him to them children how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of god praise the lord so the, uh so he says this uh how hard it is for them to cut you. You have to want the Lord more than anything. And love my heart, hope with your, with your whole heart, mind, and soul. Everything you got, you want the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. So, and they were all astonished. They wondered, they're going to wonder and ask a question. So, let me read 25. It's easier, Jesus said, for it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. We know how small a needle is than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. We're not saying that he can't go. They can be saved if they were willing to. They got to come the same way like everyone else. They got to repent and and ask Jesus to come in their heart to be born again. And six six Timothy and six and seventy says, this is what Jesus wants the people, those rich people, to do. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high minded, to be high minded at all, nor nor trust. See the rich trusting in the uncertain riches, going here today and gone tomorrow. Gone to. I've heard of rich people just jump off buildings and stuff because of their their finances were gone. But it, but trust in a living God, who giveth. And I go for us to trust in a living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. God gives us it richly, even to those people that are rich. But He wants to, to uh, not to be high minded, and don't put your trust in those uncertain riches. Uh, Timothy uh, six and eighteen, that they do good. That they be, he wanted them to be 
uh, rich in good works. We're going to be rich, uh, being good, working for the Lord, ready to distribute, uh, willing to communicate. Praise the Lord. And the final verse, 6 and 19. I, know I must have didn't pick it up, but that's all right. Thank the Lord. So I just thank God for your time and keep me in your prayers. And we're going to be, we, we got a lot of Bible study to do. God bless you. Love you. Keep me in your prayers. Sister Vanessa, if you want to read it over, Mark chapter 10, down at the 13th verse. And, and I, I stopped at uh, Mark chapter 10, uh, 25th verse. God bless you. Love you. Keep me in your prayers. God bless you. Bye-bye.